take a look at BlackBerry stock like you've seen in the past. I've mentioned this overall cycle where we came down, bounced off upward trend support level in December 2020, January 2021, went up to the upside, resistance, came back down, bounced off of May 2021 right here twice, went up to the upside, and then came down with, had a downward trend resistance line, broke through with a channel, went up to the upside. Now the question is, is this upside going to continue? I did post in the last video before the uh, pullback that we're gonna, are expecting a pullback. Um, it did break through the higher levels of the pullback I was expecting, but the lower levels of the pullback, it did not break through them yet. I think those will be the levels that we bounce off of uh, if we don't bounce off of the $11 price point, but not concerned because this is still anticipated, so it's not a big deal. There is a lower level price point, lower than the level that I meant, did mention in the last video. I don't think it's going to be seen, but I'm gonna mention it just because there is a potential. Now, again, the overall trajectory is the upside. I'm not talking about the long-term, because in my opinion, the long-term overall, uh, it will go to the upside. But again, that's just my opinion. But in terms of short-term, that is more of a concern for the time being for these videos, and I think it'll be to the upside. And I'm talking about the next three, four weeks overall. So we have this downward trend resistance line that could act as resistance, but it only has two touch points, so it's not a guaranteed downward trend resistance line. So I'm gonna cover what price point that will be if it's going up right now, even though it has a lot of resistance leading up to it. And I'm gonna uh, mention what the support level is if it were to drop down right now too as well, even though it has a lot of support levels to break through. So resistance levels to break through, support levels to break through, what price point you could enter at, I'm gonna talk about that. And um, I'm gonna talk about the earnings, again, like I mentioned in the past, where it's uh, end of September and a potential patent sale. I'm gonna brush up on that. And I'm gonna talk about the volume quickly, relatively for the most part. So right now we're in basically Labor Day weekend for the most part. On Monday is Labor Day holiday, um, recognized holiday for Canadian and US side. So markets will be closed on both sides. And that is important because Labor Day weekend or any holiday, Leading up to it, usually the volume tends to be low. You can see that right now, we're at 4.3 million shares. That is extremely on the low side. Average volume for the past 10 trading days is about 13 million shares. And that is extremely low compared to, for example, May and June and uh, January. So you can see right here, uh, let's just go to the peak and I'm going to go to a different data point. So June 3rd, the volume was at 536 million, I think. Yeah, 536 million shares. So just average right now for the past 10 days is 13 million. And then today is 4.3 million. So over a hundred times the volume for, uh, in terms of relation right now. But then if you go to the next data point the day before June 2nd, you're looking at 346 million. Let's just go to like somewhat on the low side on the way down, 68 million on June 10th. If we go to January, the volume at the peak was 372 million. Um, the next peak one was 363, 363 million. If we go on January 19th, so before the like, massive uh, spike on January, you have 112 million. So massive amounts of volume, you could visually see all these spikes. So massive spike, this was Amazon and BlackBerry partnership for the Ivy system 50-50 split. This was, uh, the volume was 330 million on December 1st. And then you can see all these volumes right here, spikes, spikes, and then relatively low volume. It's, tr it's trying to pick up, it's starting to pick up somewhat but it's, it's relatively low. It's pretty much dying off a little bit, right? So volume drives share prices and all stuff. So that's very important to be considering. Now, in terms of the uh, upside, or actually let me talk about the patent sale and all stuff and earnings just very quickly. And then I'm gonna talk about the share prices and bouncing off and levels and all that stuff. Um, so in terms of earnings, not expecting anything crazy based off their forecast. Um, what they've stated, what we're looking for is the patent sale potential. And I'm gonna explain in the future video more, but. Uh, from what they've been talking about, it looks like most likely will be coming out this earnings, which is the end of September. There is a slight chance it could be coming out at the end of December. And again, I'll explain that in the future video. If the patent sale does come out right now, the stock, in my opinion, will be running up dramatically because it's gonna be, in my opinion, in the billions. And if that's the case, you can have minimum per, per billion dollars, in my opinion, I think it's gonna go up $3 US share per, per share price. Uh, per one billion, it's gonna go up $3 share price per a billion, if that makes sense, US. And uh, quick disclaimer, like always, before I continue in terms of price points and all that stuff, et cetera, et cetera, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a professional. Everything I do share with you is just my opinion, it is not advice, so please do your own due diligence and research before buying stock. And if you like this video and find it helpful, consider dropping a like, it does help out, it does help out the channel, so thank you so much for that. And if you uh, like these videos and wanna be notified when I do upload those other videos that I'm mentioning right now or in the future in general, consider subscribing, it does help out the channel, so thank you so much for that. Now, in terms of, so that, that's the patent sale side, 
Now, in terms of the price point actions, like I mentioned in the last video, we had support at 1150, 1135, 1125, 1116 to 1118. Then we have uh, the low $11 price point. I think I might've said 1104 to 1108 in that video, can't remember exactly. And then the $11 price point, obviously, which we pretty much touched for the most part, 1101. And we're staying afloat, so that's good. Now, the next price point, which I think might be the case, but could possibly not be the case because returning from a long weekend, the stocks tend to be on the upside. So Tuesday, we could bounce back up potentially. Um, but if we do go down, my anticipation is going down on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, we'll bounce back up for the following reason. So the next level, what I mentioned in the last video is about $10.90, $10.80, and $10.70. And for the following reasons. So for example, if you look at the three month chart, there's a bunch of reasons. So right here is the moving average. There's support around the 10.89, 10.88, somewhere around there. And that, it could bounce off of that. So just to visually show, it could bounce off the moving average. Not a guarantee, but it can. Like I've mentioned in the past, these don't have to act as support. Like right here, you can see it didn't act as support, but it could act as resistance and went up and acted as resistance. But again, it could act as support and resistance, but that is not always the case. It doesn't have to. The reason why I think it will go down a little bit lower, if you don't account for long weekends and the effects it has, because it's not a guarantee it will have that effect. If you look at the MAC line right here, there's a three month chart. I was expecting right here to reverse the upside because of the one month chart. And I'll go back to one month chart, more of a reason why it will bounce up to 1080, 1090, 1070. But right now, this indicates if it's a bearish or bullish movement. Right now it is negative, it is in bearish movement, anticipating potentially a little bit more downside. Even though the bars are light shaded red and getting smaller, I think a little bit there's gonna be a little bit more downside for the following reason. If you look at the RSI chart right here, this indicates if it's overbought or oversold. Right now it's it's approaching oversold. It doesn't need to hit oversold. So I'll give you an example right here. So it's oversold right here. You could have entered roughly about 950 and had a good run up to the 1025, 1027, made good money, and it was in the oversold sold, sold territory, right? Great entry. And then even another time right here, it was oversold right here in July 27th. You could have entered at 973, whatever what it was, what it was, and then sold at the 1082 where it was oversold, right? And you would say, yeah, here's like, 955 or whatever it was, it's lower than that. And different times, different territories, it it's really doesn't matter. But this is not always a good indication by itself. And this is the reason why. So we went down to the um, nine, what is it called again, 955, 956, went up to the 1082, and it came back down to 955. If you're waiting for the RSI to fully drop, you would have probably not entered right about here anticipating because it went from 955 again, but not extremely sold territory where, where it was before. So it was 955 here, 955 here. Different parts of the RSI chart. But then right about here, if you just held off to waiting to enter here, which is the same price point we're at right now, not price point, but part of the RSI chart almost, you could see horizontal support, same level almost, give or take. It went up to the upside before that, and the upside is way more dramatic than before. So before it was 956 to 1027, 1028 from the oversold to overbought, right? But here, it didn't hit the oversold yet. It was approaching it fully, but not yet. And it went from 955 as well, for the most part, right? 955, and went up to arguably $11.30 if you didn't hold off to this point. So $11.30 and you approach overbought. So over almost oversold to overbought territory. And it is extremely overbought actually territory as well. And the run up was way more. So. We could be seeing the same thing where after Labor Day weekend, stuff like that, the stocks get bought back and this starts getting closed in to uh, potentially only going down to 1090, 1080, 1070, which is not a guarantee. It could bounce off $11 and we might not even see the 1090, 1080, 1070 range. Um, but more of a reason why they will be going up because there is a lower price point that I'm gonna mention. I don't think it's gonna be the case, but I'm gonna mention again, just because it is a potential. Here is the RSI, the RSI is pretty much bouncing off the oversold territory, so it's trying to go up. And the MAC line right here, in terms of the one month movement, is it's it's in the positive right now, so it just crossed over just right now for the most part, the past 10 minutes ago or something. Um, so it's trying to go to the upside, indicating a potential bullish run coming up soon. So this is more of the short term, the longer the charts you go is more for the longer term overall, but it's just trying to cross over. Now the reason why potentially, oh, and then also another reason why we might bounce off 1080, range overall is you can see it came down, bounced off 1088, 1087, went up to the upside, came back down, bounced off 1088, 1087. Yeah, it went down lower, but the point is I'm trying to state that there is support clearly with the 1080 range overall, plus with the moving average. Now, the reason why there's a potential, it could go down to the 1050 range. So essentially 1055, 1050, 1047, 1043, 1045, around there. Um, so 1040 to 1050 range. 
uh, is because of the following reasons. So the moving average right here, it could bounce off the 1050 range. It could, shows right now 1049, 1050, give or take. Um, and for the following reason why it could go down a little bit lower is if you go to a six month chart, the MAC line right here is in the negative. It is in the bearish movement overall, but it doesn't seem to be slowing down for the time being. So um, it could go down to 1050, you just gotta be careful. I don't think it's gonna be the case though, but it is a potential. Again, like I stated, the RSI right now is in the mid range. It doesn't necessarily need to go to the oversold territory like we've seen in the past right here, where we were, went up to, for example, on May 18th, overbought territory. So it went up to $8.92, whatever it might've been. And then it came down to the mid range, which was around $8.50. You could have sold and then anticipation to buy later when it comes down to oversold territory, but you would have missed this massive run up from $8.50 to almost $20. I remember it's showing $17, $18 right now, but if you go back to May 3rd, closer of the chart, because when you when you go with the bigger charts, the price points get compressed. So, but either way, $8.50 to almost $20 when it was just in the mid range, which we're right now pretty much a little bit past for the time being. Um, so it could reverse the upside and then go to oversold territory. So you just basically to explain, you don't necessarily need to go all the way to oversold, I would say, it's a good indication to enter when it's oversold, but you have to incorporate a bunch of news. So for example, you have to incorporate the MAC line, you have to incorporate the RSI lines or the RSI chart. You have to incorporate, incorporate fundamentals. Like for example, one of the fundamentals that I pretty much mention a lot of times in the videos is I'm reacting based off the earnings and the patent sale coming up soon. If it wasn't for the earnings and patent sale, like I mentioned in the fifth last video, I would wait until it comes down to this upward trend support line. Can it do that? Yes, it still can. It would pretty much, I don't think it would be a massive drop right now. It would be more of a bleeding drop, where for example, sep September 17th, we'll see 940 and then bounce up to the upside off the support level. So $9.40, maybe, yeah, most likely 940 range and all that stuff, maybe 950, but hopefully you get the idea. You have to incorporate fundamentals. You have to incorporate all the, uh, it, I would say more than just one tool. I would not go, you don't wanna go with too many tools because then you'll just confuse yourself and then you'll wait for like a holy grail to enter, which is not what you wanna do because there's, there's always exceptions to the rules sometimes, um, but you wanna incorporate more than just one tool and you wanna include fundamentals. So because of that, I don't think it's gonna just drop like a rock, first of all, and it won't drop over time before earnings. Will it drop after earnings, right? Like can it bounce off the support level later on after earnings? Oh, 100%, especially if the patent sale does not get released. Um, not especially, but if the patent sale does not get released and the earnings, what I'm expecting is just to be okay based off what John Chen and BlackBerry stated with the forecast, then Okay, earnings, not necessarily great, no patent sale. Yeah, after earnings, we could see this upward trend support level, but keep in mind, the later we hit this upward trend support level, the higher the low will be. So if we take until October 15th, let's just say, then the lowest you'll see is 9.95, right? Um, but then maybe it might go a little bit lower because you break that $10 price point, but it depends, it all depends exactly on when it hits it, what happens, so on and so forth. Now, given all that stuff, Again, keep in mind the 1090, 1080, 1070 does not need to be seen. We could only, we could probably only hit $11 and just bounce up to the upside again because the Labor Day weekend, people are returning and all stuff, and the volume, given how low volume was today, volume might pick up after Labor Day weekend. Now, if it were to go to the upside, and the reason why potentially for the upside, like I was going to mention, so uh, with a six-month chart, it was going to the downside. The one-year chart. I just wanna mention one more thing for the 1050 because there's another potential. So the reason why it potentially could go down to 1050 as well, the MAC line right here for the one year chart is curving down. The bars are becoming lighter shade of green, going down in terms of size. That is a little bit of a concern. It's not coming from overbought territory or extremely bought territory. It's in the mid range right now for the most part, but it could point to a little bit more of a downside where we'll bounce off maybe lower than the 1090, 1080, 1070 range and we'll probably bounce off the 1050 probably. But I don't think that's much of a concern because we've seen in the past where it becomes lighter shades of uh, green, smaller bars, and it looks like it might curve down. Right now, it looks like it's just like a clean curve up right after it doesn't curve down. That's because it adjusts when when it goes up. So right now, it looks like it's curving down, but this will adjust where it's just, it, you won't see this curve down if it were to uh, curve up next week, right? Um, so you can see that like almost like a double bounce, if that makes sense. But another thing is too, you could, cross over to negative a little bit. You can see that red bar right here a little bit, but then continue overall um, later on with the MACD line. What I'm trying to say is I wouldn't put much concern with the one-year chart. I just want to show it where there's a potential of the 1050, but the reason why I do overall movement, I'm thinking to the upside, I'm not really putting much concern with the one-year chart is because of the five-year chart that I've mentioned in the past, where this MAC line in terms of five-year movement is yes, in the negative, it is in the bearish territory, but 
it's trying to cross over to a positive. And like I mentioned before, if you entered right here, which would have been a perfect entry price point uh, in end of May, and uh, before the run up, which was in pretty much in the early parts of June, you would have been entering where the MAC lines in the negative in the bearish territory and the RSI charts in the mid range, where we're pretty much right now for the most part. This does involve risk, by the way. So keep that in mind. It's a lot of risk. It's not guaranteed. Well, for example, what you could have is you could have another negative and keep going down. It's not a guarantee you'll cross over to positive, but it is sometimes a good calculated risk, if that makes sense, where you enter before it, it does a, fully, a full run up. And uh, again, this was light shades of bars, uh, light shades of red, smaller bars. That's when I, in my opinion, is the best time to enter when it becomes smaller bars because you could see it became light shade of red, then a solid red. So it was a false, false um, indication potentially. So you got the smaller bars, that's what we have right now, plus a curve up, it's just all great signs. And that's what we have right now. So curving up, smaller bars, plus a potential bounce off. Even though this is a three month chart bar, up, uh, upward trend support line, sorry about that. Uh, you could almost see where it acts up on the five year chart as well. Came down, bounce off support, went up to the upside, came back down, bounce off support somewhat, went up to the upside, came down, bounce off support. For the most part, if you wanna think that this is gonna be the actual bounce off the upside. Can it come back down? Like I stated, yes it can, but because if you wanna add potential like fundamental movements, because the patent sale earnings coming up and all stuff, I don't think it necessarily will come back down yet unless after earnings patent sale doesn't come through. Now, in terms of the upside, because the overall movement, like I mentioned, is to the upside, we have to go reverse engineering back up again. So we have to pass the $11.16, $11.18 again, cents range, then $11.25, then $11.27 a little bit, then $11.35, then 11.50, these are horizontal resistance levels. And just to show, because I'm getting to the next level soon, is um, $11.80, $11.90, and then $12 clean for the most part, because those are like the psychological numbers. And then the $12.38, 36, 37 cents. So just to show horizontally, you can see right about here, I'm just hovering this line too much, but hopefully you can see horizontally right about here, it hits $12.38, 36, 37 cents, where it went up, hit it, got knocked down, went up, hit it, got knocked down. So we need to pass essentially almost 12, 30, 12, 40 dollar price point. If you wanna account for false breakouts and a horizontal resistance level is at 10, uh, 12, 50, sorry, $12.50. So hopefully it breaks that. Once it breaks that, you need to pass the $12.83, $13, then 13, 33, 13, 35. Yes, 1350, but the main concern, like I mentioned in the last video, is 1393, 1394, essentially that $13.90 range. We need to hit that $14 price point and break it because you might even hit it and just get knocked back down. And the unfortunate part is the longer we take, this downward turn resistance line, like I mentioned, even though it only has two touch points, could act as resistance. And if it does, by the time we meet it, we might be hitting it at pretty much at the $14 price point, which if that's the case, it's gonna be more of a resistance level besides just the fact that it's horizontal resistance, resistance as well. Once that passes, like I mentioned in the past videos, we need to pass the $15 price point, the $16, the $16.50, the $17, $17.33, I think it was, $17.50. But you will know the run up is underway fully, in my opinion, after it passes $16.50. Like always, again, not a professional, not a financial advisor. So please do your own due diligence and research before buying and selling. This is all just my opinion, not advice. Um, and then there's more resistance on the way up, but this is just a general sense in terms of the movement right now. So hopefully you like the video, hopefully you find it helpful. Um, if you do consider dropping a like, it does help with the channel. So thank you so much for that. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And I'll be coming up with those videos soon in terms of patents and all that stuff. Uh, I'll be working on them on the weekend. So hopefully they'll come out soon. If you like videos like this or other financial videos, consider subscribing so you'll be notified when I do upload those videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next video. Peace.